before the apparitions. When one describes the apparitions, Bernadette is often presented as a poor, frail and ignorant girl, living in miserable conditions in the Cachot. True, but it was not always thus. When she was born on 7 January, 1844, at the Bowley Mill, she was the first child and heiress of François Soubirous and Louise Castro who married for love. Bernadette grew up in a close-knit family in which she was cherished. Ten years of happiness in the decisive early years of her childhood made her strong and surprisingly balanced. The descent into the unhappiness which followed could not erase this human richness. Bernadette, at 14 years of age, stood only 1m40 tall. Suffered from bouts of asthma. She had a lively, spontaneous and generous nature, she was witty and incapable of deception. She was proud, which didn't escape Mother Vorzorin Nevis who described her as having a closed character, very touchy. Bernadette's faults distressed her and she fought them with energy. A strong personality but unsophisticated. No school for Bernadette, she had to help her Aunt Bernard. No catechism, her memory refused to retain the abstract phrases. At 14, she couldn't read or write, and she suffered at being excluded. Then she reacted. In September, 1857, she was sent to Barters. On 21 January, 1858, she returned to Lourdes. She wanted to make her first communion. This she did on 3 June, 1858. The Public Life This is how the apparitions took place. In the midst of ordinary daily tasks, going to search for firewood, Bernadette was confronted by a mystery. A sound like a gust of wind, a light, a presence. Her reaction. She showed her common sense and a remarkable discernment. Believing herself mistaken, she used all her human resources, she looked, she blinked, she tried to understand. At last, she turned to her companions to check their impressions, did you see anything? She turned then to God, she took up her rosary. She turned to the church and took advice in confessing to Father Perman, I saw something white in the form of a lady. Questioned by the Commissioner Giacome, she replied with a confidence and prudence and a firmness which was surprising in a young uneducated girl, Aquiro, I didn't say the Holy Virgin. Monsieur, you've changed it all. She reported what she had seen with a detachment, an astonishing freedom, I'm charged with telling you not with making you believe. Her accounts of the apparitions were precise, never adding or retracting anything. At one time, taken aback by the severity of Father Pyramel, she added a word, Father, the lady always asks for a chapel, even a very small one. In his pastoral letter on the apparitions, Manager Lawrence emphasized the simplicity, the candor, the modesty of this child, she recounts it without affectation, with a touching innocence, and to all the questions put to her, without hesitation, she gave clear, precise responses, impressed with a strong conviction. Unaffected both by threats and attempts to bribe her with advantageous offers, Bernadette's sincerity is irrefutable, she has not wanted to make a mistake. But has she herself been mistaken? Victim of an hallucination, the bishop wondered. He recalled her calmness, her good sense, the absence in her of any exaltation and also the fact that the apparitions did not depend on Bernadette. They happened without Bernadette expecting them, and in the fortnight, twice, when Bernadette went to the grotto, the lady was not there. Bernadette had to respond to the curious, to admirers, journalists and others to appear before civil and religious commissions. She found herself thrown into the glare of the news, a media storm battered her. She needed patience and humor to stand firm in this storm and to preserve the purity of her testimony. She accepted no payment. I want to remain poor. 
She did not bless the rosaries thrust at her, I don't wear a stole. She did not sell medals, I'm not a merchant. And faced with images of herself costing ten sous, ten sous, that's all I'm worth. In these circumstances, life in the cachot was no longer possible. It was necessary to protect Bernadette. Father Pyramel and the male Cad were in agreement, Bernadette would be admitted as a sick poor person to the hospice managed by the Sisters of Nevis. She arrived there on the 15th of July, 1860. At 16, she learned to read and write. One can still see today, at the Barter's Church, the writing practice strokes she made. Later, she wrote often to her family and even to the Pope. She visited her parents who had been rehoused in the paternal home. She looked after the sick, but above all she was seeking her vocation, good for nothing and without a dowry, how was she to become a religious? At last, she joined the Sisters of Nevis because they did not try to attract me. From that time on, a truth impressed itself within her spirit, my mission in Lourdes is finished. Now, she had to withdraw in order to give all the space to Mary. The hidden life at Nevis. She herself used this expression, I came here to hide myself. In Lourdes, she was Bernadette, the visionary. In Nevis, she became Sister Marie Bernard, who would be saint. One often hears about the severity of her superiors towards her, but it has to be understood that she was a unique case, she had to be shielded from curiosity, to be protected, and the community also had to be protected. Bernadette gave her account of the apparitions before the assembled community on the day after she arrived, thereafter it was not to be spoken of. She was kept in the mother house where she loved to care for the sick. On the day of her profession, no particular office forward slash work had been prepared for her, the bishop declared that her work would be the work of prayer. Pray for sinners, the lady had said. She remained faithful to this. My weapons she wrote to the Pope, are prayer and sacrifice. Her own illness made her a regular patient in the infirmary, and then there were endless parlor visits. These poor bishops, they'd do better to stay at home. Eliotes was a long way off, she would never return to the grotto. But every day she made her pilgrimage in spirit. She did not speak of Eliotes, she lived its message. You will become the first to live the message said her confessor Father Douse to her. And in fact, after having been assistant in Fermarion, she entered bit by bit into sickness herself. She did her work in this, accepting all crosses, for sinners, in an act of perfect love. After all, they are our brothers. During long sleepless nights, uniting herself with the masses celebrated throughout the world, she offered herself as a living crucified in the tremendous combat between light and darkness, bound, with Mary, to the mystery of the redemption, eyes fixed on the crucifix, that is where I find my strength. She died at Nevis on the 16th of April, 1879, aged 35. The church proclaimed her a saint on the 8th of December, 1933 not for having been chosen for the apparitions, but for the way in which she responded to that grace. 18th February 1858, Extraordinary Words During the third apparition, on the 18th of February, the Virgin spoke for the first time, what I have to say to you does not have to be written down. This means that Mary wished to communicate with Bernadette in a loving heart-to-heart -heart way. From the very start, Bernadette was invited to open the depths of her heart to this message of love. Bernadette was overwhelmed by the second statement of the Virgin Mary, Would you be so kind as to come here for fifteen days? It is the first time that Bernadette was addressed in a formal way. She felt she was respected and loved, as a person in her own right. We are all worthy of respect in the eyes of God because he loves each one of us. 
The third statement of the Virgin was, I do not promise to make you happy in this world but in the other. When Jesus, in the Gospel, invites us to discover the Kingdom of Heaven, he invites us to discover the another world within our world as it is. Wherever there is love, God is present. God is love. In spite of her poverty, her illness and her lack of education, Bernadette was always deeply happy. That is the kingdom of God, the world of true love. During the first seven apparitions, Bernadette's face always radiated joy, happiness and light. However between the eight and twelfth apparitions, everything changed, Bernadette's face became harsh, sad, and sorrowful, and above all she performed incomprehensible gestures. She moved on her knees to the back of the grotto. She kissed the dirty repulsive ground of the grotto. She ate some bitter plants. She scraped the ground three times trying to drink the muddy water at the back of the grotto. She tried to drink a little and then throwing it away, she took mud in her hands and smeared it on her face. Then the young girl turned to the crowd. They all said, she's mad. During these four apparitions, Bernadette performed the same gestures. What did all this mean? Nobody understood. Nonetheless, here we are at the heart of the message of Lourdes. Biblical Dimension OD The Apparitions These actions are biblical actions. Bernadette acts out the Incarnation, the Passion and the Death of Christ. Moving on her knees to the back of the grotto, this action recalls the Incarnation, God humbles himself to become human. Eating bitter herbs at the back of the grotto recalls the Jewish tradition found in the ancient texts. Smearing her face with mud, when the prophet Isaiah speaks to us about Christ, he depicts him as the suffering servant. The grotto hides an immeasurable treasure. During the ninth apparition, the lady asked Bernadette to scrape the soil, saying to her, Go to the spring, drink of it and wash yourself there. By these actions, the mystery of the heart of Jesus is revealed for us, a soldier pierced his heart with his lance and there immediately flowed out blood and water. The herbs and the mud represent the heart of man wounded by sin. However, in the deepest recesses of that heart, there lies the very life of God signified by the spring. Bernadette is asked, did the lady say anything to you? She replied, yes. From time to time, she said, penance, penance, penance. Pray for sinners. By penance, one must understand conversion. For the church, conversion consists of turning one's heart towards God and towards our brothers and sisters, as Christ taught us. During the thirteenth apparition, Mary said to Bernadette, Go. Tell the priests and that people should come here in procession and to build a chapel here. Come here in procession means accompanying our brothers and sisters in this life. Build a chapel here. In Lourdes, chapels were built to accommodate the crowds of pilgrims. The chapel is the church that we ought to build where we are. The lady gives her name, Q. Soyera Immaculada Conceptia. On the 25th of March, 1858, the day of the 16th apparition, Bernadette asked the lady her name. The lady replied in the local dialect, Q. Soyera Immaculada Conceptia, which means I am the Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception is Mary conceived without sin, by the merits of the cross of Christ, definition of the dogma promulgated in 1854. Bernadette went to see the parish priest straight away to give him the name of the lady. He then realized it was the mother of God who was appearing in the grotto. Later, manager Lawrence, Bishop of Tubbs, authenticated this revelation. We are all called to become immaculate. The message is signed when the lady gives her name after three weeks of apparitions and then three weeks of silence from 4 to the 25th of March. The, the 25th of March is the day of the Annunciation, when Jesus is conceived in Mary's womb. 
The lady of the grotto tells us her vocation, she is the mother of Jesus, her whole being is directed towards conceiving the Son of God, and she is entirely devoted to him. For this reason, she is immaculate, wholly inhabited by God. In this way, the Church and every Christian should allow themselves to be inhabited by God in order to become immaculate, wholly forgiven and pardoned so that they may, in turn, become witnesses of God. The Signs of Lourdes The Rock Touching the rock represents the embrace of God, solid as a rock. Throughout history, grottos have always served as natural shelters and have stimulated man's imagination. Here in Masabile, as in Bethlehem and in the tomb of Gethsemane, the rock of the grotto has also sheltered the supernatural. Without any education, Bernadette instinctively understood. It was my heaven, she said concerning this grotto. Facing this rocky mass, you two are invited to pass inside, see how the rock is smooth, polished by the touch of billions of loving caresses. As you pass through, Take time to look at the ever-flowing spring, at the rear left. The light. Near the grotto, millions of candles continuously burn since the 25th of February, 1858. That day, Bernadette arrived at the grotto with a blessed candle which she held, still burning, in her hand until the end of the apparition. Before she left, the Virgin Mary asked her to leave the candle burning in the grotto. Since then, the candles offered by the pilgrims remain alight day and night. Each year, 700 tons of candles burn for you and those who cannot come. This sign of the light is omnipresent in sacred history. Pilgrims to Lourdes express their hope in a tangible way by carrying a candle in the procession. The water. Go and drink at the spring and wash yourself there. This is what the Virgin Mary asked of Bernadette Subirus on the 25th of February, 1858. Alyot's water is not holy water. It is normal water. It has no thermal virtue or specific property. Alyot's water from the spring became popular because of the miracles associated with it. The people who are cured either apply it or drink it. Bernadette Subirus herself said, this water is being taken as medicine. One must have faith, one must pray, this water would have no virtue without faith. The water of Lourdes is also the sign of another water, that of baptism. The crowds. For over 160 years, the crowds come to Lourdes from all corners of the earth. During the first apparition on the 11th of February, 1858, Bernadette was only accompanied by her sister Toinette and a friend Jeannie Abadie. After only a few weeks, Elyards gained the reputation of the City of Miracles. Hundreds and then thousands of the curious flocked from the surrounding countryside. After the official recognition of the apparitions by the Church in 1862, the first local pilgrimages were organized. The reputation of Lourdes assumed an international dimension in the first years of the XXTH century. However, it was only after the Second World War that the statistics show a sharp increase, from April to October, each Wednesday and Sunday at 9.30am, an international mass is celebrated in the Basilica of St. Pius X. International masses adapted for young people also take place in the sanctuary during the months of July and August. The Sick People and the Hospitaliers What is particularly striking to the casual visitor is the number of sick and disabled people present in the sanctuary. All those traumatized by life may find a certain degree of comfort in Lourdes. Officially, 80,000 sick and disabled people from many countries come to Lourdes each year. Despite their wounds or disabilities, they feel they are in a haven of peace and joy. The first cures of Lourdes occurred during the apparitions. At the time, the sheer sight of the sick moved people to offer their help spontaneously. They became the men and women hospitaliers. The cure of the body cannot conceal the cure of the heart. 
the sick and the so-called able-bodied meet and pray together in front of the grotto of the apparitions before the Virgin Mary. Thursday 11th February 1858, the first meeting. Accompanied by her sister and a friend, Bernadette went to Massabile on the banks of the Gave to collect bones and dead wood. Removing her socks in order to cross the stream, she heard a noise like a gust of wind, she looked up towards the grotto, I saw a lady dressed in white, she wore a white dress, and equally white veils, a blue belt and a yellow rose on each foot. Bernadette made the sign of the cross and said the rosary with the lady. When the prayer ended the lady suddenly vanished. Sunday 14th February 1858, Holy Water. Bernadette felt an inner force drawing her to the grotto in spite of the fact that she was forbidden to go there by her parents. At her insistence, her mother allowed her, after the first decade of the rosary, she saw the same lady appearing. She sprinkled holy water at her. The lady smiled and bent her head. When the rosary ended she disappeared. Thursday 18th February 1858 the lady speaks. For the first time, the lady spoke. Bernadette held out a pen and paper asking her to write her name. She replied, it is not necessary and she added, I do not promise to make you happy in this world but in the other. Would you be kind enough to come here for a fortnight? Friday 19th February 1858, the first candle. Bernadette came to the grotto with a lighted blessed candle. This is the origin of carrying candles and lighting them in front of the grotto. Saturday 20th February 1858, in silence. The lady taught her a personal prayer. At the end of the vision Bernadette is overcome with a great sadness. Sunday 21 th February 1858, Aquiro. The lady appeared to Bernadette very early in the morning. About 100 people were present. Afterwards the police commissioner, Giacome, questioned her. He wanted Bernadette to tell what she saw. Bernadette would only speak of Aquiro, that thing in local dialect. Tuesday 23 th February 1858, The Secret Surrounded by 150 persons, Bernadette arrived at the grotto. The apparition reveals to her a secret only for her alone. Wednesday 24 February 1858, Penance. The message of the lady, Penance. 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 Pray to God for sinners. Kiss the ground as an act of penance for sinners. Thursday 25 February 1858, The Spring. 300 people were present. Bernadette relates, she told me to go, drink of the spring. I only found a little muddy water. At the fourth attempt I was able to drink. She also made me eat the bitter herbs that were found near the spring, and then the vision left and went away. In front of the crowd that was asking do you think that she is mad doing things like that, she replied, it is for sinners. Saturday 27 February 1858, silence. 800 people were present. The apparition was silent. Bernadette drank the water from the spring and carried out her usual acts of penance. Sunday 28 February 1858, the ecstasy. Over 1,000 people were present at the ecstasy. Bernadette prayed kissed the ground and moved on her knees as a sign of penance. She was then taken to the house of Judge Ribs who threatened to put her in prison. Monday 1st March 1858, The First Miracle Over 1,500 people assembled and among them, for the first time, a priest. In the night, Catherine Latapi, a woman from Lubajic, seven kilometers away, went to the grotto. She plunged her dislocated arm into the water of the spring, her arm and her hand regained their movement. Tuesday 2nd March 1858, Message to the Priests The crowd becomes larger and larger. 
The lady asked her, Go and tell the priests that people are to come here in procession and to build a chapel here. Bernadette spoke of this to Father Pyramel, the parish priest of Lourdes. He wanted to know only one thing, the lady's name. He demanded another test, to see the wild rose bush flower at the grotto in the middle of winter. Wednesday 3rd March 1858, a smile. From seven o'clock in the morning, in the presence of three thousand people, Bernadette arrived at the grotto, but the vision did not appear. After school, she heard the inner invitation of the lady. She went to the grotto and asked her again for her name. The response was a smile. The parish priest told her again, if the lady really wishes that a chapel be built, then she must tell us her name and make the rose bush bloom at the grotto. Thursday 4th March 1858, the day all were waiting for. The ever greater crowd, about 8,000 people, waited for a miracle at the end of the fortnight. The vision was silent. Father Pyramel stuck to his position. For twenty days Bernadette did not go to the grotto, she no longer felt the irresistible invitation. Thursday 25th March 1858, the name they waited for. The vision finally revealed her name, but the wild rose bush, on which she stood during the apparitions, did not bloom. Bernadette recounted, she extended her arms towards the ground then joined them as though in prayer and said Q soy era immaculata concepcioi, I am the immaculate conception. The young visionary left and, running all the way, repeated continuously the words that she did not understand. These words troubled the brave parish priest. Bernadette was ignorant of the fact that this theological expression was assigned to the Blessed Virgin. Four years earlier, in 1854, Pope Pius IX declared this a truth of the Catholic faith, a dogma. Wednesday 7 April 1858, The Miracle of the Candle During this apparition, Bernadette had to keep her candle alight. The flame licked along her hand without burning it. A medical doctor, Dr. Dalzors, immediately witnessed this fact. Friday 16 July 1858 the final apparition. Bernadette received the mysterious call to the grotto, but her way was blocked and closed off by a barrier. She thus arrived across from the grotto to the other side of the cave. I felt that I was in front of the grotto, at the same distance as before, I saw only the Blessed Virgin, and she was more beautiful than ever. Since the apparitions, Eliotz has dealt with more than 7,000 cases of unexplained cures. 70 cases of unexplained cures have been recognized as miraculous by the Church at this time. One Catherine Latapi from Lubajic, France, date of the miracle, date of recognition, the 18th of January, 1862. Two Louis Bariot from Lourdes, France. Date of recognition, the 18th of January, 1862. Three Blazet Kazanav from Lourdes, France. Date of recognition, the 18th of January, 1862. Four Henry Busquet from Ney, France. Date of recognition, the 18th of January, 1862. Five Justin Buhort from Lourdes, France. Date of recognition, the 18th of January, 1862. Six Madeleine Risen from Ney, France. Date of recognition, the 18th of January, 1862. Seven Marie Moyo from Tartars, France. Date of recognition, the 18th of January, 1862. Eight Pierre de Rudder from Jabk, Belgium. Date of recognition, the 25th of July, 1908. Nine Joe Chime de Hand from Jesves, Belgium. Date of recognition, the 25th of April, 1908. Ten Eliza Sison from Rognonas, France. Date of recognition, the 2nd of July, 1912. Eleven Sister Eugenia, Marie Mabille, 
from Bernay, France. Date of recognition, the 30th of August, 1908. Twelve Sister Julienne, Aline Bruyère, from La Roque, France. Date of recognition, the 7th of March, 1912. Thirteen Sister Josephine Marie, Anne Jourdain, from Goincourt, France. Date of recognition, the 10th of October, 1908. Fourteen Amélie Chagnon from Poitiers, France. Date of recognition, the 8th of September, 1910. Fifteen Clementine Trouve, Sister Agnes Marie, from Rueil, France. Date of recognition, the 6th of June, 1908. Sixteen Marie Libranchu, Mrs. Vuiplier, from Paris, France. Date of recognition, 6th June 1908. 17 Marie Le Marchand, Mrs. Orthia, from Seine, France. Date of recognition, 6th June 1908. 18 Elise Lessage from Buckroy, France. Date of recognition, the 4th of February 1908. 19 Sister Marie de la Presentation, Sylvie Delporte, from Lille, France. Date of recognition, the 15th of August, 1908. 20 Father Siret from Beaumontel, France. Date of recognition, the 11th of February, 1907. 21 Aurelie Huprel from Saint Martin Lenoid, France. Date of recognition, the 1st of May, 1908. 22 Esther Brackman from Paris, France. Date of recognition, the 6th of June, 1908. 23 Jeannie Tulassen from Tours, France. Date of recognition, the 27th of October, 1907. 24 Clementine Mallet from Gordachart, France. Date of recognition, the 1st of November, 1908. 25 Rose Frahensois from Paris, France. Date of recognition, the 6th of June, 1908. 26 Reverend Father Salvator from Ruel, France. Date of recognition, the 1st of July, 1908. 27 Sister Maximilian from Marseille, France. Date of recognition, the 5th of February, 1908. 28 Marie Savoy from Cato Cambrises, France. Date of recognition, the 15th of August, 1908. 29 Johanna Bazinac from Saint Laurent des Batons, France. Date of recognition, the 2nd of July, 1908. 30 Sister Saint Hilaire, Lucie Dupin, from Perlio, France. Date of recognition, 10th May, 1908. 31 Sister Saint Beatrix. Rosalie Vildia, from Evreux, France. Date of recognition, the 25th of March, 1908. 32 Marie Thaïs Nobelt from Avignon, France. Date of recognition, the 11th of February, 1908. 33 Cécile Dauville de Frenchu from Tournai, Belgium. Date of recognition, the 8th of December, 1909. 34 Antonia Molin from Vienne, France. Date of recognition, the 6th of November, 1910. 35 Marie Borel from Mendy, France. Date of recognition, the 4th of June, 1911. 36 Virginie Hordbauer from Loenes la Saulnia, France. Date of recognition, the 25th of November, 1912. 37 Marie Bayer from Saint Gem La Plaine, France. Date of recognition, the 30th of July, 1910. 38 Amy Lup from Verne, France. Date of recognition, the 5th of August, 1910. 39 Juliette Ryan from Saint Hilaire de Voust, France. Date of recognition, the 18th of October, 1913. 40 Marie Fabre from Montedon, France. 
Date of recognition, the 8th of September, 1912. 41 Harriet Bressols from Nice, France. Date of recognition, the 4th of June, 1957. 42 Lydia Bross from Saint Raphael, France. Date of recognition, the 5th of August, 1958. 43 Sister Marie Marguerite, Françoise Capitaine, from Rennes, France. Date of recognition, the 20th of May, 1946. 44 Louise Jamain from Paris, France. Date of recognition, the 14th of December, 1951. 45 Francis Pascal from Beaucaire, France. Date of recognition, the 31st of May, 1949. 46 Gabrielle Clausel from Iran, Algeria. Date of recognition, the 18th of March, 1948. 47 Yvonne Fournier from Limoges, France. Date of recognition, the 14th of November, 1959. 48 Rose Martin from Nice, France. Date of recognition, the 17th of March, 1958. 49 Jeannie Jesters from Begles, France. Date of recognition, 13th July 1952. 50 Marie Thaïs Canin from Marseille, France. Date of recognition, the 6th of June, 1952. 51 Madalena Carini from San Remo, Italy. Date of recognition, the 2nd of June, 1960. 52 Jeannie Fretel from Rennes, France. Date of recognition, the 20th of November, 1950. 53 Thea Angel, Sister Marie Mercedes, from Tetname, Germany. Date of recognition, the 28th of June, 1961. 54 of Asia Ganora from Casal, Italy. Date of recognition, the 31st of May, 1955. 55 Edel Troudfolder from Vienna, Austria. Date of recognition, the 18th of May, 1955. 56 Paul Pellegrin from Toulon, France. Date of recognition, the 8th of December, 1953. 57 Father Leo Schwager from Freiburg, Switzerland. Date of recognition, 18th December 1960. 58 Alice Cotold from buil lorettes France. Date of recognition, the 16th of July, 1956. 59 Marie Bigot from La Richardes, France. Date of recognition, the 15th of August, 1956. 60 Jeanette Nouvelle from Carmours, France. Date of recognition, the 31st of May, 1963. 61 Eliza Aloi from Patti, Italy. Date of recognition, the 26th of May, 1965. 62 Juliette Tamberini from Marseille, France. Date of recognition, the 11th of May, 1965. 63 Vittorio Michelai from Scurel, Italy. Date of recognition, the 26th of May, 1976. 64 Serge Perrin from Lyon d'Angers, France. Date of recognition, the 17th of June, 1978. 65 Delizia Cyrilli from Patano, Italy. Date of recognition, the 28th of June, 1989. 66 Jean-Pierre Bully from La Coron. France. Date of recognition, the 9th of February, 1999. 67 Anna Santanillo from Salerno, Italy. Date of recognition, the 21st of September, 2005. 68 Sister Luigina Traverso from Casale Monferrato, Italy. Date of recognition, the 11th of October, 2012. 69 Danila Castelli from Birigado, Italy. Date of recognition, 
the 20th of June, 2013. 70 Sister Bernadette Morial from Beauvais, France. Date of recognition, the 11th of February, 2018.